Welcome to day two. Now that was fun. Fortunately, we got a driver who wasn't afraid of the skinny pedal. So our very first stop of the day is over here at Quadratech. For those of you who don't know, they, they actually make a whole host of new products that you're gonna want. And I'm here standing with the man, the myth, the legend, Rob. Best install videos on the internet, bar none. Um, he's gonna tell us all about what we're seeing. Rob? Yeah, hey, thanks. So I think you talked me up a little much there. I don't know about all that, but behind me, we have something really awesome here. So what we're calling this is our JTE. Uh, and we call it that because we started with a 4 by e and Greg Henderson, unofficial use only, who's <laughs> floating around here, wizard at chopping things up and putting them back together, um, turned it into a two-door gladiator. So it's got the wheelbase of a four-door Wrangler, and then we slapped the bed on the back and actually extended it a little bit. So we've got like a full six-foot bed on the back of the truck, very usable, great size bed. Um, and then the whole kind of story behind the truck and how it came to be um, was that we've got this partnership with Tread Lightly that we're working on. So we're calling it our 50 for 50 project where we're doing 50 trail cleanups in 50 states, one for every state uh, over the course of about two years. Uh, we've already completed about 10. We've got a handful more that are kind of, they're done, but we don't have the numbers on them yet. Um, and that can be everything from picking up trash on the trail to, you know, a lot of times in Moab, like we build some fencing to keep people off of sensitive areas and things. We don't want them in vegetation. Stuff that's going to help us and help our whole, you know, off-road community keep trail access open, right? That's the thing. We don't want our access to these great places closed down. So by supporting doing things with Tread Lightly, we can help keep that opened up. So our 50 for 50 project, we wanted to build something that can be used. So Tread Lightly is going to take this from us after the show. They're going to take it around to a bunch of projects over the next couple months, put it to work, use the truck bed. So we fully expect it to come back a little beat up and that's okay. Um, and then, you know, to tie in with the whole theme, you know, we wanted to do something environmentally responsible. So there's the 4 by e platform. Awesome. I know everyone wants to know what exactly <laughs> is on this Jeep, especially there's a lot of products of yours I see on it. Yeah. So could you walk us around it and show us? Definitely. So yeah, one of the big things we did this year at SEMA, uh, we brought almost 200 new products, believe it or not. We've got 75 new products over New Products Hall, and we've got a lot of them right on here. So our lineup of carnivore bumpers is on here. We've got our carnivore front bumper. We also have a carnivore rear bumper on the back that we'll take a look at in a minute. It's actually a Wrangler bumper that we massaged a little bit to fit on here. Uh, we have our rescue winch up front, our new rescue line of winches. Uh, we offer synthetic and steel cable, 10,000, 12,000 pound capacity, and a whole lineup of recovery gear to go with it. Um, so then if we kind of work our way around, Quadratech Premium Projector LED Headlights. These are actually produced for us by JW Speaker. They're an awesome American-made, great performance headlight. And then as we kind of work around the vehicle, our Baja HD Fender Flares. So you know, queuing off the looks of a Rubicon fender um, actually opens it up a little bit more than a factory Rubicon flare would. Um, open like you would do like maybe a full fender chop on a, on a factory Rubicon flare. So plenty of room for 37s on here. Speaking of, we've got Nitto's new Recon Grapplers on here. 37 1250s uh, wrapped around our Lynx Trail Gunner wheel. Uh, so this wheel we offer in a black or the bronze. Uh, the bronze looks fantastic so here. I, I got to point out, uh, of all the aftermarket fenders I've seen so far, this one looks really factory. And <laughs> even the DRL, it, is this actually a DRL? So, from... really cool thing about this, you're using your factory light here. <laughs> so, it'll work with if you've had the factory incandescent package or the LED pack. And there's even some variation in there, right? If you had a Rubicon with the, the two bars or if you had, um, I guess the Sahara, or Sahara I think has the side-by-side -side LED mm -hmm. pack. Um, so it works with all the factory lights. Um, you basically just take that out of your flare, everything mounts in and, and bolts right up on the underside. You have to trim two little mounting tabs off. It's super That's easy great. to do. Um, but yeah, it gives you that, that super factory look. The install on them is amazingly simple. Um, and we've got them now for Wrangler and Gladiator. Um, We've got nice. one of the very first ones on the back here, but but they are now available for the Gladiator. And uh, we have the inner fender liners to go along with them as well. 
Speaking of the Lynx wheel, so we also have the Lynx suspension now. So this has our Lynx 2 in suspension, features uh, fully adjustable control arms, uppers, lowers, fronts, rears, um, and a dual durometer style bushing that's in there. Um, gives you a ton of flexibility off-road, a ton of misalignment and articulation out of them, but um, requires no maintenance and gives you a great ride and, uh, and a lot of adjustability in these control arms, enough so that uh, they can actually be used on everything from no lift, you can just upgrade your control arms uh, all the way to six inches of lift. I mean, wow. They put a lot of adjustability on the ends of these arms. Nice. Uh, up in the windshield, one of our products that have been out for a little while, our Stealth Light Bar that's tucked behind the glass up there, always kind of catches people's eyes. A nice clean way to get a light bar installed with no brackets outside or anything. Nice. I think a lot of our viewers are gonna to wanna to know how did you actually get this longer bed and especially on a four by E, the, the battery pack. Can you yep. actually show us what you did with that? Yeah, definitely. So um, this is a combination of a couple Gladiator beds. And one of the things that we wanted to do, we worked with Greg on is using all factory pieces. Um, so like, when we chop the cab, these are all factory like crash repair panels. So, I mean, it, if you take the bed off, it looks like a Gladiator back there. Um, so once we closed out the, the cab, uh, the bed actually, the factory bed stops right about here and then we extended it forward to fill in the gap. Um, it's extending the bed about, about 10 inches. Um, and then had to kind of fabricate a little bit of paneling down here to meet up with the body. So will we see the battery in the bed? So the battery stays under the bed actually. Okay. And you can actually see it in the wheel well. It's right down here. It actually stayed in the factory location. So in the 4xE it's under the rear seat. Um, and actually if you, if you really look at it, the floor pan is still here. So the floor pan carries out from the body. Uh, out from the cab and up and the battery's mounted on the floor pan nice. and then the truck bed just kind of sits on top of it there um, and you know we worked uh, with some contacts at Jeep to make sure that everything would be good and they said yep the battery is, is fully weatherproof it can be outside the cab that's okay um, and so it, it actually tucks in really nice there and believe it or not you know we didn't have to modify the floor of the bed it still looks factory it's flat we didn't have to you know do a big cut out or a bump out or something in the bed to accommodate that battery. I have to say that you really have to see it in person to really appreciate it. The body work, the finish, it looks super clean. I can't see any flaws in it. You guys did an excellent job. <laughs> Greg spent a lot, a lot of time on this thing and, uh, and yeah, we're super proud of how it turned out. Um, so we keep going around the back. Um, as I mentioned, our carnivore bumper. So this is actually our Wrangler bumper. And um, Greg kind of moved some things around. We pulled this plate out a little bit so we could tuck it closer to the back of the truck. Um, trimmed a little bit on the sides here so it would wrap real nice around the rear corners it's of the Gladiator. Um, but essentially the exact same bumper that you would see on a, on a Wrangler there. And then because we had a little more room to work with, uh, <laughs> we put a winch in the back too, so we've got our new rescue winch up front uh, and we have uh, one of our Quadratech Q-Series winches that we've had available for a long time now. Um, they're a great remote mount solenoid style winch. It's tucked up under there uh, on the rear cross member. Um, and then we've actually put the, the plug-in right there where the, the factory oh, nice. sometimes has the embed power. Sure. Um, so it's really easy to access. You can plug in your winch remote and uh, you know, whether you're recovering somebody on the trailer, again, this is going out for trail cleanups. Maybe it's hauling a bunch of tires or a big old couch off the trail somewhere. <laughs> so you mentioned there's stuff on the inside that you want to show us? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Let's check out the inside for sure. So our friends with Alpine uh, always take care of us and we've got a new 509 in the dash there. So their latest generation of their in-dash restyle kit um, that uh, we've ensured will work with our 4xE platform now. Worked with Catskin to do some Those custom nice. reupholstery. So it's their 4xE uh, seat set up. So we've got the, the blue stitching in there uh, to keep queuing off of that. And we've got the 50 for 50 logo embroidered on the backrest. Very um, cool as well there and then continued with uh you know the paint match through the dash um and some custom fabricated uh door pockets there that are kind of a prototype piece right now something that you're gonna potentially release we'll see because yeah. 
We all know how much all of us love those nets that stretch out and look lame after a while. <laughs> right, <laughs> the saggy door nets on all right. these Jeeps. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, this it looks like a factory piece that it goes does. in there. Um, and it's it's all a, a plastic piece just like the rest of the door panel, which is kind of nice. Uh, you know, metal molly panels are really nice sometimes. Sure. Um, sometimes maybe not right next to your, your leg when you're riding <laughs> around. <laughs> um, yeah, so a lot of thought has gone into that. And then, uh, you know, we've got our, our Quadratech Ultimate Floor Liners in there, our door sill entry guards. You know, we sprinkled in all of our production stuff um, where it was appropriate. We're really excited to get out and use it um, and for Tread Lightly to take it and, and use it on some trail cleanups. Um, so we're actually, after the show wraps up on Friday, uh, we're hightailing it up to Moab. Oh, wow. So we're gonna go have some fun with it for a couple days and then we're gonna turn the keys over to Tread Lightly. Tell me you're gonna be making videos and posting it up. Yes, yeah, yeah, we'll definitely have some more videos coming. Um, we also have another vehicle here this week. It's actually outside. We did a giveaway over the past few months, so we built up a Wrangler, and um, we're taking that out to Moab too for something a little special in a couple days, so. And where can people see your videos? Of course, youtube.com slash Quadratech, or head right over to Quadratech. We've got our Torque blog over there. You can check out all of our videos, plenty of other great stuff. Awesome, thank you so hey. much, Rob. I hey. really appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for coming by this morning, guys. Awesome, Rick. Love the green, too. The green is phenomenal. So this is actually our Quadratech green. Oh, okay. We custom mixed the paint, uh, and then we added a little extra flake to it, just that to- pearl coat or whatever you got yeah. in there is awesome. Just to make it pop, and uh, yeah, it came out. It came out really nice. Thank you so much. You bet. So now I'm here over at Rock Chalk. I'm standing with John Curry himself, the legend, and he's gonna be telling us about some of the products that they're bringing to you here at SEMA 2022. John? The biggest project we worked on last year is our heister system for the JL. And basically what it does, it, it raises the tie rod two and three quarter inches, and it raises the drag link two and a half inches. Also raises the track bar two and a half inches, so you can see it all there. It, and the big advantage of this is just getting the clearance underneath it. But there's a lot more to it than that. The knuckles are iron instead of aluminum, so we're upgrading both knuckles to iron. And then we offer it with the ram assist, where you can see here it comes with the bracket with a skid plate on it. That's it's all figured cool. out. We have our own forged chromoly uh, clamp for the ram assist bracket. Or if you don't want to run, run ram assist, you can still run the steering stabilizer. It's a different bracket. So that's one of our new items that we have. Another new item is our track bar. You can see it here. It's organically shaped. It has a, it's a pinch bolt style instead of a jam nut. And then it, it's notched right here in the front. I don't know if you can see it on camera, we'll but it. see how it comes out forward like that? That's if you're running like a Dana 60 or something for the extra, extra room. We added that into that track bar, but that's forged chromoly. And, and so that's a new item. Another new item that you're looking at here, there's a lot of stuff on this thing is we have an adjustable bump stop. Nice. So that's what you're looking at right there. So it does, this is the little stock thing you use, but you just turn these, well, you gotta loosen it up, they've got it all tightened down. But actually, if it was in the car, you would actually turn this like this, loosen it up, and you'd pick up these spacers, slide them off there, and then tighten it back down. That's so great. if you're trying to adjust your bump stop and get it exactly where you want it, this goes from, I think, uh, like an inch and seven eighths to three and a quarter or something like that. So there's a lot of adjustment. Most guys on 37s need about a two inch bump. Sure. You know, approximately, so, so that's another thing. This high steer system needs an inch and seven eighths of bump. Okay, so, so this as opposed to putting hockey pucks or otherwise on the axle itself, you can make the adjustment right, right. on the jounce itself. Yeah. We got some other new stuff, uh, geometry correction stuff. We've been doing a lot on drivability lately, trying to, you know, because the JL has some, they, they want to shimmy, they want to do all kinds of weird stuff. So we've been doing a lot of stuff in drivability. And a lot of it, as soon as you lift them and stuff, things kind of go out the window. So we've been trying to get some of that back. So one thing on this bracket you can't really see, most Dana 60s on the aftermarket, the, uh, the control arms on the front are raised about an inch higher than stock. We actually added a location on the, on the geometry correction bracket for like a Dana 60. You awesome. could actually raise your top control arm up to get your geometry back. On the bench over here, we got a couple other new items. 
This is a three inch Johnny joint. Wow. We've made a three inch Johnny joint for probably 10 or 15 years. And really the only people that ever used them was the military. Okay. And we never made a forging. So last year I said, you know what? We need to make a forging. We got some guys wanting to build big trucks. Their truck's a little bit bigger than that joint. This, this joint is, you know, three quarter inch bold is three and a quarter wide we can actually make this ball a bunch of different widths but this is a one piece bushing we've incorporated the one side into the forging so it makes it a little bit stronger it's got a safety washer on this side so you see the snap ring can't pop out so it's a super heavy duty joint and while we're here this is another new joint we just came out with notice the long shank yeah so if you've got some application where you have a clearance problem um, that's where the long shank comes in or this shank can be bent so if you're trying to miss something or uh, you know get a little extra travel you could actually bend this it'll take about a 50 ton press but you can bend it is that something that you would offer we could bend those for you okay. yeah so just, someone had mentioned to me online that I should check out you have something called a rock nut or something like yeah, that a rock nut this is a rock nut and basically the way the rock nut works it basically tightens down on this taper and squeezes the threads down on, on so instead of just being a jam nut and you're pulling on the thread, this actually squeezes this down. So when you tighten this down, it squeezes down on it. That's a rock nut. Here's kind of another sample, like a weld on one. You would weld that onto a piece of tube. So when you, and you can see when you, this is taper in here and this taper. These tapers aren't exactly the same. So it's made so when you tighten this down, it pushes in down on those threads. So. Well, that sounds like a huge improvement over a standard jam nut. Yeah. So, <laughs> unfortunately, it's more money too because there's more machine parts in it. Well, thank you. I really appreciate your time, John. It's great seeing well, you again here by. at SEMA. Walking through here, I just came across this booth of uh, Thor's Lighting. Is that your company? Yep. And I'm standing with Elias, and he's going to show me a cool new product. Is this brand new for SEMA or? Yeah, that's, uh, we actually just uh, became a company in January of this year, and uh, this is our first SEMA show, so we're incredibly excited to be here. So what exactly am I looking at right here? Well, this is our lightning fast rapid four tire air system. So what this does is it allows you to air up and air down all four tires at one um, using a central manifold. We call it the Thor's hammer. Um, and it's really, really fast and it's easy because it equalizes all four tires as well. So is this something that you would actually install on a Jeep and then you leave it there or is this something that you just hook up when you're out on the trail? Do you just hook it up when you're out on the trail? It's portable. It comes with a carrying bag and carrying case. Um, we really truly believe that simplicity is best. So. Uh, my business partner and I are actually former police officers and so we recognize in law enforcement you want to keep it simple because if something breaks you need to be able to fix it. Fantastic. So what exactly do you get all with this kit? This yeah, so what you're going to get is the digital gauge uh, Thor Tamer manifold that comes with the quick disconnects right here, standard, and then you're going to get the a tire connection for all four tires and we have our own um, air chucks that are exclusive to us uh, that kit comes with that as well as the carrying bag with straps and everything to keep everything contained inside the bag it's compatible with any air compressor or air source on the market from compressed co2 to onboard air so one of the things i'm going to ask then is um so if a guy has a jeep i'm sure you can accommodate that but what if you have something longer like a gladiator do you have enough hose to accommodate that as well yeah so our mid-size system is actually designed to work on all jeeps including the gladiator we also make a full-size air system that's for ford f-150s or full-size pickup truck sprinter vans we've got you covered and we even make a smaller one for atvs as well okay so getting the air out of your tires is easy enough how do I get it back in? You got anything for that? Yeah, we got something to help you get the air back in. We've got the Thor's Lightning Bolt True Dual Air Compressor. Uh, it's one of the fastest air compressors on the market. And what we are releasing here for SEMA is a completely new technology. It's called Total Control. So what that does is it allows you to set the PSI and once the compressor hits that pressure, it turns off. 
So you can truly set it, walk away, and not worry about it. And that'll be for all the tires that all yeah. the same pressure. You're not having to do one uh, at a time. It equalizes. So if you're using the air compressor with our four tire air system, it's going to equalize all those tires and make sure that the exact same pressure. Okay, so two questions I know sure. that I want to know is, what's the price point on this? The air system starts at 215 that's 215 dollars depending on size um depending on what compressor you're running you might need an adapter that we sell that's about 15 bucks air compressor depending on which one you want the one without the total control technology is 239.99 and then the total control air compressor is 374.99 um, and I would be remiss not to mention we also sell uh, our patented air compressor mount. Um, so we can hard mount a non-ARB air compressor into a Jeep. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And then the second question I have is where can I buy one of these? You can buy one at ThorsLightning.com or at our retail shop, which is in Wheat Ridge, Colorado, right outside of Denver. Awesome. Well, thank I, you so I, much. I, really a pleasure, man. <laughs> it's a I, pleasure. Thank you so much. No problem. I'm standing here over at Moride. I just pulled the corner and I noticed something really cool in the back of this jail. And I'm standing now with Austin and he's going to tell us about what we're looking at and how it works. Austin? So we have some new products that we have brought to the market. Um, we've seen a big uptick in the overlanding space. So what we've come out with is what we call our trail kitchen. So this kitchen can be used in really any model of vehicle, but what we're primarily focusing on is gonna be the Jeep Wranglers. So right here, what we have is a full kitchen setup that can mount to any Jeep Wrangler, especially the four doors. We have what are called our no drill kits that allow you to just mount directly into where the existing D-rings are, so front, and rear, these two bars mount horizontally, and then you can set our full kitchen up on the inside without doing any drilling, any modifying, any welding, anything like that. So these bars allow you to basically just mount right down to the floor, and then you're basically just attaching four bolts to install this whole system. So if it's your daily driver and you don't want this big kitchen with the refrigerator and everything in it, you can, with in a matter of minutes, if you have a 7 16 wrench, you can remove the whole thing. Some of the benefits and features of our kitchen here are it gives you everything you need for a weekend away. So you have your refrigerator, you have water on the side, and then what I'll show you here is we have some extra countertop space. You basically just press this button, slide your kitchen out. So now instead of reaching into the back end of the, uh, the Jeep, now you have access to your refrigerator and any of the goods that you have in there. And then on top of that, we have a secondary slide that then comes out from the bottom side. And this is made from an HDPE, it's called Starboard. It's a marine grade cutting board material and allows you to cook, clean, do anything you need to on the outside of your uh, Jeep. On top of that, we also have an additional slide. So this is a support bar. This kind of slides up and over. That folds down. And then you have another countertop. So you just walk around to the side lift this up and then right here on these keyholes you basically just press it in slide it to the side and now you have all this countertop space so again the feature here is more countertop space extra storage underneath for cooking utensils a single burner stove if you'd like anything that you need for a weekend away so more countertop space than anyone else you have your refrigerator you have your water there's this enclosure that allows you to mount stuff on top and on the side of it without having to remove like your sleeping bags or any extra gear typically if you would set that on top of your refrigerator you'd have to clear everything out of the way just to get to what's on the inside we also have a couple other options so this is our flat countertop surface here this fold-out counter we have one that has a routed hole with a collapsible rubberized sink that folds up to about an inch in, in thickness. So that can store on the inside of this cabinet. And that way you can have running water, you have a motor, and you have everything you need to do your cooking and your cleaning all in one place. So uh, approximately how much weight can this hold? It's sticking out quite far. Yeah, so they're 250 pound dual locking Accuride slides. What we do is we put a 50 pound weight limit. Obviously you don't want to stand on the end of this because of the extra leverage of sticking out further. So we consider it a 50 pound weight limit. I notice here on the side of it, you've kind of got some kind of a molly design. 
with a water canister. Can you explain that to me? Yeah, so what we try to do is make our space as versatile as possible. So you can see we have a Rotapax attached on the side. A lot of people will option to put water in there for cleaning all their utensils after grilling out. Um, however, if you take this Rotapax off, you'll see, as you mentioned, is a molly panel. So all these different grids are used for molly pouches. You can attach uh, different accessories like bags and stuff like that. So if you don't want to use the Rotapax, this is just a two gallon Rotapax, you do have the option to use a molly, a molly pouch to use all that space on the side as well. Now I noticed that um, there's a Dometic fridge on here. Do you have to use Dometic or can you use an ARB or other brand as well? Yeah, so this is a Dometic 45. That's just what we're using for display purposes. It's worked well for us, but you can use ARB, Norcold, Angle, any of those other popular manufacturers. Um, for the JLUs with the seats to be still fully up, this is a 45. It can fit up to an ARB 50, which is about the max size. Um, on the 45 here, we did have to take the rear um, handle off to clear the back seat so it didn't interfere there. Um, but you can use really any manufacturer as long as it sits within the dimensions of this bottom tray and it doesn't stick up too far to hit that top angle of that back seat. So the higher up you go, the more interference there might be, but up to a 50 quart refrigerator. So the important question that everyone wants to know, what kind of price point are we looking at on this? Yeah, so one thing that we pride ourselves in is that we do everything as a modular system, meaning that you can start with just the base model. So the base model would basically be the drawer here, it would take the tray and the slides. That retails around $625 retail. And then you can add on the different accessories like our fold out counter, like our clip on counter, like the enclosure and the no drill kit. So all in for everything you're seeing on the back end of this JLU is around $1,100, not including the refrigerator. And where can someone purchase this? So we don't sell direct, so really any uh, online retailer that you prefer to buy through. Uh, we work with Quadratech and E-Trailer, um, coming soon, Summit Racing. Um, some of those more popular online retailers you can purchase any of our products through. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate your time. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you guys very much. So one last footnote that I'd like to add is that all this stuff is made in the USA because it matters. And that is the end of our day two coverage of the 2022 SEMA show. We hope that you've been enjoying all that we've been bringing to you and hope that you'll come back again tomorrow to see even more.